Hi everyone, welcome back to Muscular Development. My name is Lauren Lata, host of the Buff Bombshell Show. Today I'm here with Mel Lewis. Hi. <laughs> and today we are going to be doing a very special episode for you first time bikini ladies out there, all about NPC bikini and posing. But before we do, I want to just chat to Mel and see how she is doing because she's looking ripped. <laughs> Not quite yet. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there slowly. <laughs> so Mel, have you disclosed your show details online yet or is there something you're still keeping private? Uh, you know, I have been saying online that I'm eight weeks out, but it looks like I might be six weeks out now, but that is a decision that is being made currently um, and kind of in the process of final decisions this week. So I was planning on doing, you know, the regional in the UK at the end of July, but it looks like I might do the one two weeks earlier and then jump into some European shows a bit earlier this year. This is so exciting <laughs> and I'm very excited for you to step on stage because you. you've been working super hard. I know that last year you had the Irish show and then you had your own stuff happen and now you've been coming back yeah. with Kim Otto, Mr. Yes. Otto, <laughs> and just doing your thing by doing a couple of new international shows are these all new places and experiences yes, they are and I think I'm so excited about it because I think when we moved over here to the UK we really thought we were going to jump into European shows and travel a bit and then with COVID and that all the C word like we just didn't actually get to do that until now so I'm really excited and looking forward to doing this last year the plan was to do this but then with everything that happened yes. I just kind of had to take a step back uh, but I'm really glad that I did take that break because my body's responded so well this prep um, and I'm really looking forward to showing what we've built in the off season. That's amazing yeah. and you were telling me that you were going to be doing quite a few shows so yes. I'm, I'm not going to say which ones because this will be down to Mel when she tells you guys on social media yes. um, but that's going to be really fun for you and I'm you. very excited so good luck. Thank you yeah thank you I appreciate that. Have the best time. I'm gonna have so much fun I love competing stage days like a big party it's like a celebration <laughs> of like all your hard work so yes. having the opportunity to do that multiple times is just exhilarating I'm really excited. Yeah so a big shout out to I guess your sponsors. Yes. Mr. Otto. Yes and shout out to Kim he is doing such a great job as always he is just the best and he's taking such good care of me uh, this this prep, every prep he always does. So I'm really, really grateful for him every single day. Um, and then my, my sponsors, Magnum Nutraceuticals. I'm really, really giving a huge shout out to them. Amazing brand. If you're looking for good supplements that are pharmaceutical grade, then you definitely need to go check out their page. Um, and Ugo Sport, who is their um, distributor for the UK. And then of course, Magic Bikinis. Oh. See, this person followed me on Instagram. I didn't know who they were, but thank you. So, but that's awesome. Good luck. And thank it's you. really nice to see competitor and you're, you're going for that pro card. So it's always exciting because we try and obviously highlight all the new bros and then, you know, share our own journey as we yeah. go on here. And it's just a, it's a big, exciting thing because in bikini land, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. So for example, Giles and I will be hosting, hang on. <laughs> Plain. The next guest. N next guest. <laughs> <laughs> so on like bikini land and you know all the kinds of stuff that we do in bodybuilding, Giles and I will actually be going to the Olympia Masters in August. Amazing. So if you do plan on going to that show or doing Possibly. that pro qualifier, <laughs> you know we will see you there, which will be fun. Yes. And if anyone is going there, there is a pro qualifier in the. Uh, Masters Olympia that you can go to and try and obtain your pro card, earn it if you can. And then obviously there'll be the Masters Olympia, which will hold all of the divisions and it's going to be, oh no, just except fitness. No, no wheelchair. So no wheelchair, but most of the divisions will be at the Masters Olympia and we are so excited and you will be able to hear mine and Giles's lovely voices as we live stream to you. So please get in touch if you are a Masters competitor because we would love to hear more about you and your journey to the stage. And with that being said, let's jump into our bikini first timers guide for all things posing with Mel. And Mel is a posing coach, so you know, you you clearly know the NPC bikini criteria very well. I do, yes, I study it daily. <laughs> exactly, and you clearly know like about the posing. And for me, it's also something that I, you know, 
I guess bikini is more of my, my speciality. Let's just put it that way. It's more of my, my buff brain. Yeah. So I am the buff brain. And then you've got like the bikini. So let's do this. All right. So we're trying a little bit different presentation wise. <laughs> okay. So apologies if this gets botched slightly. So last year's Olympia, we had Maureen Blanquisco winning. Mm-hmm. We had the beautiful Jen Dory in second. Ashley Coltwasser in third place. We had... Laura Lee and Daraja Hill. Can't remember who came fourth. I think Daraja? Daraja came fourth. I think that Laura Lee came fifth. So you guys yes. did your top five. <laughs> absolutely stunning. Who did you out of this lineup mm-hmm. had winning at the Mr. Olympia? Oh, it was so close. It was so, so close. I mean, after the Arnold's last year, I, I did think that Laura Lee had a good shot at winning it. Um, And of course, you had Ashley coming in who has won it multiple times. Um, I was really excited to see Daraja in that top five because I love Daraja and I've been following her journey for a few years now. So it was so exciting to see her climb the ranks so quickly. Um, Between Maureen and Jen, it was it was really such a tight one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I followed Jen's journey more because she was just sharing so much on social media. So um i was excited to see her coming in with a leaner package but it was just hard to know who was gonna take it it always is in bikini (laughs) it was extremely hard i actually thought that jen had it i was there watching the pre-judging and i was literally right there in the audience and i did think that jen was like half a point ahead yeah because it's so hard like you said it's so hard bikini is anyone's game so it just depends on I guess the finer details on the day. Yeah. But before you can go to this level, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you got to get to, you know, the stage first. So for those of you that are practicing, trying to get to this level here, okay, and be like this lady or this lady or this lady that's one, we got to show you some other things first. So we're going to do that. And we're basically going to go through a couple of the bikini winners for you guys over the course of the last 12 years because bikini is still relatively new when it comes to bodybuilding it is the newest category that they have added aside from wellness but it is still pretty new yes so with less muscle but you know there have only been a couple of winners over the last 12 years and it is now building and because of the way that it changes it really can be um anyone that kind of wins it so yeah this is exciting constantly evolving yeah and you can see miss sonia gonzalez over here the first ever bikini winner 2010 was to there. sorry I was there. giles was there wow really you were there <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of bikini wait, wait, wait. yes yeah, so it was sonia you were thinking of nicole negrani yes <laughs> so you were there the second year second year no, 2000, Nicole Nograni won 2011. No. Yes. No. Well, this was on the official MPC website. <laughs> so Nicole either Nicole. somebody's done this wrong or... Jay Cutler won. <laughs> it is. It's wrong. Nicole Nograni won 2010. You guys... I was there. I was, I was at the after party and I said to her, are you even old enough to be here? Because you're only 18. Wow, 18. Wow, is she 18 yeah, at the time? Yeah, the mum was a pro as well. It was not Sonny Gonzalez. Okay. I was there. Well, we're going to switch that around. And we've got to alert the MPC people because they have put it online like this because I copied from the website. So, <laughs> um, so there you go. Not the first winner, but if we go th- and scroll through, we've got Nicole in the middle and we've got Sonia and Natalia Mello. Mm-hmm. I mean, have you ever followed any of these ladies on socials? Not really, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think it was a little bit before my time, but I've definitely seen... Um, these comparisons you know on on various platforms over the years and how bikini has evolved what is your opinion on that oh it's definitely changed so much you know from just the styling to yeah the the look of everything i actually do follow natalia mello quite religiously in her journey at the moment because okay. she no longer competes but she's still very much an active fit person yes. and persona online um our other two lovely ladies i don't really hear much of them anymore and i do mm. think it's like a people sometimes can lose their you know they just they don't want to do it anymore that's absolutely fine but you can never take away the title in terms of the actual bikini uh, that's evolved (laughs) the bikini has evolved the look has evolved 
and the actual body has changed so much. So we're mm. going to scroll through here for all of the other winners too. And the next page is just all about Ashley. Okay. <laughs> because she won 2013, 14 and 15. So it's all about Ashley on this one. And um, again, Ashley has changed so much over the last almost 10 years. Yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Definitely, especially in the last two or three years, she's really, really pushed herself hard and yeah. she's, her body's changed so much. She's evolved so nicely. So yeah, I mean, even as she's rocking that old school front pose here and here, mm -hmm. um, but you know, everything has changed. And then we've gone into sort of 2016, 2017 and 2019. Yeah. Miss Courtney King, Angelica, Elisa, who's your favorite out of these three ladies? I would have to say Angelica just because I know Angelica well and yeah she's just such a good ambassador for the sport such a good role model and just such a positive um, influence on so many people and I have so much respect for her I really really do and physique wise she really did start to bring more muscle and yes. that's where it's evolved from so hats off to her because I love more muscle um, so yeah definitely they're all amazing though I mean the year that I started competing Courtney was Miss Olympia mm -hmm. um, so we've seen it evolve over the years and yeah it's just beautiful all of them every everyone who won in the year that they won definitely deserved it yes they were the the best of that year for sure yeah. so it is really but like you said there there seems to be a timeline i should put a little timeline this is where it changed yeah definitely and if i go back it's like uh this is where it changed yeah <laughs> and then it kind of changed here again mm -hmm. so there's a couple of different points in bikini where, where it has changed and the the physiques just got um they've just become how they are today and how we see them yeah. and if we go one forward you know you'll see 2020 21 and 22 yeah and it's just changed again so it's it's great but i think last year with 2022 and 2021 with jennifer and maureen uh slightly similar in terms of shape it's yeah. just that maureen was slightly more I don't know, balanced, I guess. Yes, it is always going to be about that balance and that symmetry. But I definitely feel like the last few years, everyone's kind of been um, pushing that line as far as they can and really just bringing a fuller physique. Um, mm -hmm. I think what's exciting as well is just seeing the competitors have grown over the years and they really have filled out their physiques and what they're bringing now. So, you know, it's always going to be evolving, I feel. It's going to be exciting to see what happens this year, yes. but we can get into that later because <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And then if we go into NPC B bikini criteria, so now you've seen sort of the evolution of bikini from when it first started in 2010 to 2022, where it currently is now. Yeah. And bikini NPC criteria, you can go on NPC News Online and you can click on rules and you can go to each division and see what Sandy Williamson, head judge, has put down for criteria basically it has not changed in um quite a few years now they're still looking for the same thing yeah. but um just the kind of sculpting of the body has changed as we were talking because they're still looking for these key elements mm -hmm. for in your opinion out of all of these key elements here what is the one that you think most bikini pros are working on for me, I think it's the glutes. Absolutely, the glutes, definitely. Um, but also that hourglass silhouette. Um, so you'll see, especially if, since um, as a Pacini one, there's been more gearing towards having a V taper. Obviously, they did come back and say the following year that they didn't want too much of a of a lat because everyone just started, I think, training back like two <laughs> or three times a week. Um, but that tiny waist you know, is something that all bikini competitors are always trying to achieve. Um, the glutes definitely. And I would say the shoulders have come a long way the last few years as well. I guess if we could draw like two upside down triangles starting from here. So like an upside down one here. Yeah. Boom. And then you come down here like this, it would look like an hourglass. And mm -hmm. that is what Mel is trying to say in terms of having the hourglass shape and figure and just also sort of having that X frame locked in but not flaring out your lap so much out. like a figure competitor because yes. they don't want to see that absolutely and then i was a bit worried last year with bikini that yes. some of the girls delts were starting to get a little bit too striated i yes. mean 
I we see so much in the lead up to the Olympia because everyone is now trying to self promote and they're really trying to get their names out there because you know it's the Olympia and it's the biggest show that they got. But yeah. I started to worry at one stage like Bikini Upper was starting to get too massive, and I don't know how you feel about that. I think something that I that concerned me that I think might have led to the straightening of the shoulders was that girls were coming in overly conditioned. And I think especially in Europe, I saw a trend for girls being incredibly lean on stage. I'm talking completely drawn in the face, not exuding health and femininity anymore. And I think that that can sometimes result in the shoulders also just looking a little bit too straight and a bit too stringy. There's no body fat on there at all. Obviously, the goal is to bring the body fat down, but not to a percentage where um, we're restoring striation in muscles. That's not what they want to see in bikini. So they want to see the bubble. They want to see the pop, but they don't <laughs> want to see, you know, what we would see in bigger categories like figure, where we have a bit more of striating in the muscles and we can see that separation. Yeah. We'll get, we'll get another couple of these slides going for you guys with mm -hmm. other categories so you can see it eventually because bikini should really be that entry point and it should be something that can be achievable. I would say stepping on stage is not quite as achievable just yet because you have to give it a little bit of time now due mm. to the um, the amount of muscle that needs to be sculpted in the right way. Yes. But it is something that, in my opinion, can definitely be achieved within, you know, if you're quite consistent and you're very new, you could build it up within a two or three years. Yeah, I think they're saying at the moment, you're looking at about a three-year physique to get to that kind of upper amateur level mm. um upper amateur not even yes. pro my god <laughs> so it's not it's not a it's not what it used to be back in the day where it was kind of like you would expect to see this person works out and they're on the beach you know like a beach body yeah. now we're we're definitely looking more for that fitness model look um so there is there is a need for muscle like for me, this is an everyday this is nice the, yes. uh, it's a nice everyday look that you can just go on the beach with and yeah. like you said the upper amateur levels changed to more like like this now yes absolutely you know so we're all there we're getting it um the criteria is changing a little bit and the criteria is not changing but the actual sculpting of it is changing a little yeah. bit yeah i think something i do want to touch on with the glutes though is i do see a lot of girls glutes are important i train them multiple times a week but we don't want it to be out of balance with the upper body. So if you're going for bigger glutes, you need to go for bigger shoulders too. And, and remember to keep that silhouette and that hourglass shape that we were talking about. Um, you don't want your lower body to be overpowering your upper body at any time. So it's not necessarily that the biggest glutes are going to win in bikini. It's who's got the best flow, who's got the best symmetry um, and best who's balance. got that balance from top to bottom. Yeah, I absolutely. I agree. So don't worry too much if you don't have like the most massive glutes and bikini. Yeah, I think that's a good tip. <laughs> but do train them. Do train them. And then we are going to go into posing because. OK, so posing on YouTube, you can type in posing on YouTube and there's going to be a bunch of stuff. But sometimes I try look for posing and for stage items and i don't always feel like people understand what a stage is for the first time yes and you can use this diagram to now sort of get a basic understanding of what your stage looks like from the top down if you're looking so at the bottom we have all of our fabulous judges you've got becky clausen in the middle you've got sandy williamson and you've got atila now you typically would have your stage set up and you can enter from either side for the sake of this diagram we're going to enter in from the left side and you would come in do your walk here maybe do an entry pose and then come down and then this is where all the magic happens they want to see you pose front back front sign off and then you're walking to the other side and you potentially wait on this line here mm -hmm. and Every competitor will do that. Now, in your opinion, how long should an NPC amateur routine take from walking on stage, posing to waiting? Look, they say 10 seconds. 10 seconds. I feel like that's not achievable. <laughs> I do feel like that might be a bit, a bit too short. I think 
you know, standing on the sidelines at the muscle contest in Ireland the other day, I definitely could see when the judges were feeling like this routine's going on for too long. Um, so remember that you you want to just showcase your best. So I would say 20 seconds would probably be more of your goal in terms of time. Um, and your transitioning between poses doesn't need to be too drawn out. So kind of come in a lot of the time, even, I mean, this is definitely right, but sometimes you would just go straight to that front line and they wouldn't want you to even go to the back of the stage. Um, and in that case, you know, just get into those important poses as quickly as you can, Mm -hmm. um, showcasing your best. You don't have to do a million hair flips and a million turns and and walking back and forth that's that's what the pros do and i can understand why girls do that because we look up to pros Mm -hmm. and we want to be like them and sometimes that's the only information that's available for girls to to go off so i can understand why those longer routines are coming in um and that's why stuff like this is so important so that the the girls that are doing the amateur shows can understand the criteria um in terms of stage time and posing on stage so yeah i think i think 20 seconds I wouldn't say they're going to chase you necessarily off stage, but when they start to say thank you, that's time to sign off and go to the side. Otherwise, you might just get a little bit marked down or they get annoyed at you. Yeah. So that'd be something. And let's just quickly talk about some of those transitions, though, because I've seen some very weird and wonderful things, and I'm seeing it now in NPC. And my biggest cringe factor with a transition is when a girl touches her glutes. Oh, yes. Now, I can, I can, I know where that's come from. That's come from a different federation um, where that's quite popular. And I think a lot of girls, especially in Europe, have moved over from that federation. So perhaps brought that style of posing in some cases along with them yes um but yes it's definitely not appropriate for the npc yes where we are very professional in how we pose keep it classy and Mm -hmm. elegant but try avoid butt swiping i call it because it is not a good look when you do some of the girls have beautiful fingers you know like and i I just and i'm looking oh but then they'll try touch their glute or caress the glute or they'll try like touch the under part of the glute with a hamstring tie and i'm just thinking this is too much glute you know, because I just want to see the booty yeah. and then you walk and then you go, you know, do your thing. Yeah. But it's when you start touching it or you do that like swoop around thing with your butt. Um, and and I have I, I have it on good uh, note from Becky Clausen that says it's cringy. Yeah. She used this word cringy in Sweden. And I remember thinking, right, never touch the glutes. <laughs> so if you have a posing coach that is starting to say, like, do this try keep it out of the NPC, even as an amateur yeah i think remember i, I love the word class i always say to my girls remember stay classy mm-hmm. with everything that you do in, exactly. in the npc and if you were if you're going for pro mm-hmm. even if you're just going for a pro look and you're doing it as a hobby remember would a pro athlete be swiping under their glutes and there's a fine line between sexy yes and stage appropriate i totally agree because yes i totally agree you're showing off the body it's you want to be showcasing yes showcase your best side of your glutes not the um the butt swipe (laughs) so that is basically how you walk on with a little bit of an indication as to not do that one transition that we were just saying because it is a bit of a pet peeve and then you've also got comparisons here as an npc bikini competitor and in every single division that you do excuse my um edit over here i love this so when you have done your pose and you've waited on the back line or on that diagonal line they will call out your numbers so they might say number 13 lauren number 26 mel so mel and i would come into the center and we would take our spots and then basically as you can see all these lovely ladies here as they are being judged by the nice judges they stand in their front pose and they're doing their thing and you've got to listen really carefully because if they say ladies turn to the back you just turn to the back you don't walk forward but Mm -hmm. if they say ladies please walk to the back turn around and walk to the back and hold your back pose Mm -hmm. 
And you were saying something really interesting earlier about um, not being caught off guard. Yes, absolutely. I think it's so important to, to I, don't th I think a lot of girls practice their routine quite a bit that don't necessarily spend the time practicing their comparison rounds. You need to be able to hold your poses for a long period of time. If you are someone who's looking to get into overalls and be judged for a pro card, you're going to be worked on stage. So you need to make sure that you can hold your poses. Uh, you want to hold them for a good four or five minutes sometimes. Uh, a great thing that we were talking about earlier, and I do this often because I actually got this idea from Jennifer Dory back in the day, is to put comparison rounds from different shows on YouTube yeah. and to practice your posing according to those comparison rounds. And I do that. I do that every day because it's so important um, that you're not caught off guard and practice different ones mm -hmm. because you want your you want to almost train your brain to be listening for those cues. Are they going to tell me to walk to the back line? Are they going to tell me to turn around to the front again? When I'm at the back line, are they going to tell me to turn around and walk straight to the front line? Or are they going to tell me to hold that back line? Um, so it's really important that you know um, that you're training your brain to listen out for those cues. Otherwise, yeah. you find yourself in your back pose and they say, okay, ladies, turn around and walk to the front line and you kind of doing this because you're a bit uncertain uh, what you just heard and takes a minute for your brain to be like, okay, yes, I need to actually walk to the front line now. So um, yeah, definitely an important thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, and as you were saying, it's also great to do this with different kinds of videos mm. because some of the judges will call things out in a different way. Yeah. And you don't, like you said, you just don't want to be caught off guard with the way that it gets said because one judge says it one way and the other maybe says it in a slightly different or clearer way. You yes. know, you never know. I think something that's also important and I see it a lot happening so much um, on the pro stage, they would usually call out, you know, they know the pros well, they'll often call them out by name. On an amateur stage, they're going to be calling you by number. Mm -hmm. Make sure you know what your number is and you've got that <laughs> on your brain. And you know when you're on stage because so many times I see girls going, is that me? Is that me? Keep looking down to their number to see if they're being told or just standing there not realizing it's their number being called. So, you know, the minute you get your number at check in, be like, I am this number and yeah. this is my name now for the next, you know, two days um, and make sure that you've just got that number on your mind constantly so you're not constantly looking down trying to see if it's you. Um, and then also make sure, you know, if you're practicing, a, you know with YouTube videos make sure that you pick someone so today I'm going to be Maureen I'm going to be Maureen today and it's important that I remain Maureen throughout this practice because when I hear them calling for her of course when I'm on stage it will be my number but it gives me an opportunity to to practice comparisons in terms of being moved around that line and being able to say that's me I'm going to move and how do I transition then from this spot on the line to that spot of the on the line and um, just practicing that as well so that's great advice I like that one different videos and learning to listen and just that's great advice yeah so then we've just got bikini poses just quickly here you only need to know really two so it's the front and the back pose mm -hmm. and um what would you what advice would you give to somebody that's learning this for the first time or just in terms of this pose i think it's so important especially with that front pose to be practicing daily you know make it a priority in your routine for the day um because you need to practice to get that mobility a lot of my clients will start out with this front pose and they don't have that mobility to rotate the upper body in such a way. You kind of like, in South Africa, we'd say a cook sister. Yeah. <laughs> but you're kind of like a pretzel. You, you, you have to rotate, you know, your upper body and your hips are kind of facing towards the back. And that mobility takes time. And even in the back pose, you know, you want to have your back up straight and you're just kind of pushing um, the lower the lower back out slightly mm. slightly okay you're not pushing your whole booty <laughs> out and leaning forward please don't do that um, but that even you know even I practice every day and I've been doing it for years I still feel it in my lower back mm -hmm. uh, you need to practice every day so that you get the mobility and don't be frustrated with yourself if you don't get that mobility on your first practice um, you've got to be patient with yourself uh, and you'll find that as you lean off a stage and your confidence grows your practice will start to show and you'll be able to adjust just slightly in terms of how you stand as you come into condition yeah I like that advice too and it's um, definitely like you said the mobility is something to work on yes and and also not just through the back but through 
this uh, side of the hip here yes. because I find lots of people, they find a good strong leg with which to pose on. And then all of a sudden it gets really tight. So practice stretching out that too so that you can make sure that you don't get any like, is it sciatica or yes, some sort so of, true. Some sort so of true. tightness You can get piriformis syndrome from that as well. Mm. I think you need to just be rolling out often, stretching. I know a lot of girls that will do a bit of uh, stretching with yoga and that before they get started with their posing. I'm not one of those girls, but th <laughs> that's a good idea, definitely. Um, and yeah, you want to be able to have everything nice and loose and you, you're getting regular work done so that you can stay on top of your posing you're not getting too tight i think also you know i think back to last year when i stood overalls at the ben Weeder, they compared us for quite some time and i remember my glutes <laughs> in that front pose eventually starting to feel like it was going to cramp because you can hold those poses for really long mm -hmm. um so just be prepared for that. Be prepared for that and practice as much as you can so that on the day it doesn't feel overwhelming and you feel like you're losing your form in that on stage because you're getting tired. How many minutes would you say somebody should be practicing for day if they were just getting into it? Uh, if you're just starting out, I would say give your set your timer on your phone at the end of your workout. Maybe go into the studio if you can in your gym at least for 20 minutes and just run through your routine and do a few comparison rounds. And then from there, you can kind of schedule in time more frequently mm. as you go. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's a good amount of time. Oh, and then, okay, so with back poses, we've seen the beautiful back pose over here, which is what you should be doing, yes. versus please don't pose like this. <laughs> so these are old back bikini poses, and um, we don't get to see them anymore, which is a good thing. But yeah. if you are researching your bikini and you are researching your posing and you haven't quite got a coach yet, or let's just say you haven't gone on one of these group things where you're attending yeah. and you're just looking for this just know that this is what we do not do anymore because it might be quite obvious but i'm i have seen one or two girls still pose like the right yes. um and i have never seen anyone pose like on the left for the back but i have with the bottom of the legs where they're so wide out so yes just keep it um keep yourself up to date stay relevant and look within the last two years max <laughs> yeah. keep it somewhat simple yeah. and clean and you will be okay instead of fancy and that goes the same with hand transitions i think there's a lot of hand transitions and then just for general posing tips so mel said practice every day for a good 20 minutes or just practice for 20 minutes after your workout to set mm -hmm. your timer I think that walking on is just as important as walking off and signing off. So do practice your walk yes, actually getting onto the stage. It's so important and it shows your confidence <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Definitely. And it's just one of those things. It's the first time you step on stage and you're stepping to the side. Mm -hmm. So just practice it because you don't want to just be practicing the front poses and not be practicing anything else. Yeah. Do you practice something that is simple and clean instead of being overly flamboyant mm -hmm. with your with your posing for an NPC amateur? Do you always angle your body towards the head judge? Yeah, so important. And Especially if you're on the outside of that line. Yes. In comparison rounds, you want to angle yourself towards the judges. So, for example, if this was Angelica, she'd be angling in towards Miss Becky over here, who is the head judge. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that a lot of people will do now because it just helps them to display their physique as, you know, more front on towards those judges instead of to the side. Because if you're to the side, they can't really see everything. Yeah. So that would be unfortunate if uh, you lost some points there just because you were not able to showcase it. And then obviously do not touch the glutes. <laughs> Practice with your bikini, jewelry and heels on as well as your hair down. Yes, so important. So, so important because your hair we can get stuck in your earrings. <laughs> it's so important to know, you know, and your bikini with the connectors. You want to just make sure that you know how you're going to, to swipe your hair off there without getting any any uh, uh, issues happening yeah. along the way, <laughs> anything tangled. So do, yes, do practice with your, your bracelets on too, because mm -hmm. when you move your hair over, that's yes. something that can happen. And like you said, put on a you, put on a video of YouTube Pro Show to practice call-outs, so. Yeah, good, such a good one. That's pretty good. 
And then we talked about this in a previous episode, which you can find all about bikini fashion. And it's just something that we covered with shoes, heels, jewelry, makeup and tan. And these are the finer details that really go into the actual show presentation look. Yes. This is nothing to do with coaching. This episode's pretty much all about posing and about the evolution of bikini body. Mm -hmm. Um, If you would like to see that fashion video for all things bikini, then we will link it in and you can see it. Mal, do you have any final tips or pointers that you can give to a first time bikini competitor that's watching this for the first time? Um, your presentation matters in terms of how you look absolutely and I help girls with stage styling so if you need help and advice just reach out to me like just reach out and let's have a look at what you've put together even if you're not going to go ahead and order through magic bikinis or anything like that I I love to help girls get ready for stage Um, just remember that you need to look healthy and you need to look feminine and um, some of the other federations will allow ponytails and braids and all sorts of crazy hair colors and that try and keep it classy simple more natural looking in this obviously you're going to have a full glam makeup but in (laughs) terms of you know hair color and that um, I think something that's so important that I actually saw Adam Benelli is it Benelli? Um, Benilla. Benilla. Him point out is the hair color against the tan. Yes. So if you're a girl with red hair or with really blonde hair, just make sure or goldeny blonde hair. How would that look against my tan? Would it be blending in too much? And it's the same with your suit. Will my suit blend in with my tan mm-hmm. too much? Um, and you want to have those little pops of color in terms of your suit matching with your with your skin tone um and your hair color kind of popping out a little bit but not in the wrong way so don't bring a crazy look to stage bring a classy look to stage and just think to yourself full glam that's what i'm going for full glam classy look classy nails you know all of that yeah so good luck to everyone that is going to be competing this year and good luck to all the ladies that are going to be um sort of competing I guess before we also close this off, we actually did have some videos that we wanted to show, but Mm -hmm. we totally forgot about it. So, well, I totally forgot about that. (laughs) So I'm gonna quickly just draw this down here and we're gonna go to your teammate, Miss Jessica. Oh, Jess. And congratulations over here. Huge shout out to Jess and congratulations for qualifying for the Olympia last night. Absolutely (laughs) flawless. Look at her, she is. A gem, an absolute amazing human being, such a good ambassador for the sport and so on point with her posing, her presentation and individuality. She brings her own individual look to stage. It's beautiful, isn't it? They all got little crowns. Did you see that? And then the winner got... I mean, they were posing with their crowns on their routine. So they were given those before they even went on stage. Mm -hmm. So that's new. We never get crowns like that here in the UK. Well, never mind. But we never get crowns like the massive ones for bikini in the UK. That's amazing. See, do flawless, beautiful look. Oh, that's amazing. Stunning. Excellent. Beautiful. Oh. Oh, she looks so happy. So congratulations to you, Jess. That's absolutely amazing work. And then we're also going to quickly just shout out to Miss Ashley Katie, yes. Miss Ashley Colbasser. Um, so Ashley did the Mile High Pro Show yesterday. This was actually a video of her last weekend at the Nevada State Championships where mm-hmm. she also won. Yes. Um, this will be Ashley's 39th pro win. Amazing. And, you know, this is the thing that when you, I guess when you start doing Oops. bikini, <laughs> you kind of aspire to be like, you know, your favorites. And Ashley's definitely one of mine. So it's quite uh, wonderful to see you know, these ladies achieving and, and looking so gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Ashley, such a beautiful look that she's bringing this year. Definitely massive improvements every year. She just keeps leveling up and it's absolutely inspiring and motivating to see. Oh, different bikini. Yes, the green. She, the green is her signature, isn't it? But I don't think she wore green yesterday. I, I do think she wore red. Red seems to be quite an in color this year for our pros different kind of bikini so yes, yes congratulations that was oh it was a nice crown as well so <laughs> you guys if you want to get a nice crown go to the usa because they <laughs> seem to give them out a lot more there so. <laughs> but with everything thank you so much for watching this episode on sort of bikini and pc posing first timers um this was especially 
guided for you guys who are sort of getting into the sport for the first time you know you maybe you're looking towards competing next year or you're just looking for some advice and that would be you know we're more than happy to help and Always. give you some advice so yeah. thank you so much for watching mel thank you so thank much you. For thank everything. you so much thank you for having me and good luck to all our competitors who are stepping on stage for the first time this year Yes, good luck. And don't forget to please like, share and subscribe and pick up your copy of MD with Blessing on the front. Second time. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. And we are 